Hey guys, just a warning, today's video might be a little bit intense. It might be a bit controversial because today we're gonna to be talking about public and private beaches on 30A. If you're planning a trip to 30A or looking to invest here, you may feel overwhelmed by the various public and private 30A beaches. It's literally a hornet's nest right now of legislative brouhaha. With no clear end in sight, it's been very annoying to tourists and homeowners in our region. The 30A beach situation is unique because most of the beachfront in South Walton County now is considered private. So what does that mean for you, someone who's looking to buy or invest in our neck of the woods? It means you must be informed before you buy. I'll do my best to break it down for you in this video. We'll have a great time uh, walking the beach. I'll tell you a little bit about the history of some things that happened. And then we're gonna explore a community that I think is doing it exceptionally well. It's all coming up next on Living on the Emerald Coast. All right, so we're here at Blue Mountain Beach today, and this is basically where everything got started with this public versus private uh, brouhaha. Now the chairs on this side, you'll see that is the end of the line to the public beach, okay? So the public beach for this access literally goes from this line to that line right there in the sand. Now if I'm walking on the wet sand, that's totally legal you're not trespassing at that point. I don't think they can ask me to leave at this point, but you know what, the law is subjective. <laughs> at this point, nobody really knows what's going on. All right, so we are walking up on the house, the stretch of the beach that started this whole thing off. That house you see right over there, the beautiful tan one, was owned by Governor Mike Huckabee. Now, Governor Mike Huckabee, an Arkansas resident, most of his life never thought that he would have enough money to own beachfront property but you know using his political resources he did manage to purchase this piece of land which uh, for many years was uh, a private beach access however due to his political connections he was able to get this land to build on and he did so uh, the only problem is, is the locals were coming out here for years and years using this beach and they continued in fact that beach that house right to the left uh, was some public access area so uh, what he did is he complained and when he complained to the powers that be uh, they they started helping him out. Why did they start helping him out? Well, he's got money. And uh, he started donating to a lot of people's campaign funds. The end result is the bill that we are dealing with today. And uh, as sad as it is, that's what happened, man. And now we're having to deal with the repercussions. He bought that piece of property there for $2 million and then built up the McMansion on top of it. Lived there for a little bit and then sold it for $9.8 million. Uh, a couple years ago to an out-of-town investor uh, who doesn't live here, who doesn't plan on making a, a secondary property. So that property is not used quite often. And that's indicative of a lot of these different places here on 30A. We're talking spring break is what we're doing right now. Spring break 2024. And uh, the beaches yesterday were packed, but down this area, they weren't packed at all. Over there towards the public access, it was so packed you couldn't find a parking space. In fact, Yesterday, I looked for parking all day and I could not find a spot anywhere within two miles of this. Now, this has got to be fixed by city government. The one place that's doing this well right now is Grayton Beach. Hey guys, we are back in the studio. The reason why we're in the studio today is because I have to show you on the map exactly all the locations that are private uh, on our stretch of 30A Beach. And when they first released this map last week, a lot of people were freaked out uh, because look at all this red. This is all private beach here. You can check this map out for yourself at visitsouthwalton.com slash beach bay access locations. And this will give you the location of all the 30A beaches. We'll go ahead and start on the east side here at Inlet Beach. And if you go on this, you can see uh, that the access right here at Inlet Beach this is not private beach, so you're good to go here. And if you go in a little bit further, you can kind of see the parking area that they have here. So you can park all along here. We probably have about 25 spaces that you can utilize there. This is a very nice beach. Uh, if you go out here into this area right here, you have the reef uh, of the grouper. You know, when they first released this map last week, uh, a lot of people uh, got a little upset about all this red, but uh, basically what this is telling you is this is not uh, 
anything that you could access. If you're coming down to visit, if you live here, uh, you know, if you don't have deeded access to this area, you can't go. Rosemary Beach, beautiful neighborhood. If you're living or if you uh, are renting property anywhere in this area, you do have rights to use all of this beach. Same thing goes with Alice Beach. You'll find that these beaches, a lot of the times, aren't very crowded. That's because people are paying a premium to stay at these locations, okay? Uh, Seacrest Beach here, you do have some access right here. And you'll notice all the bikes always piled up right here because everybody's always trying to hit up these beach access points. Which, what I think is interesting though, is look, they kept these private right along their line, which is fine, right? Uh, so all of this beach is available for the public. This beach is available for the public. Uh, but there are scattered situations where, oops, okay, I'm on private beach. Oh, I'm, I'm on public beach, oop, I'm on private beach. Uh, and what we see a lot of this, it, and it makes for a mess down there, is we'll see no trespassing signs. Uh, and you know, it's like the song, signs, signs, everywhere signs. It just clock it up the city way, breaking my mind, you know? Uh, and it has no business being on the beach as far as I'm concerned, but uh, you know, it is what it is. This is what we're living in. And this video is just meant to show you kind of what's going on here. As we keep on going further down, let's go ahead and investigate some of the areas we were at today so I can kind of show you uh, what we were looking at. We were in Blue Mountain today. This is where we were at, uh, right here. Beautiful beach, by the way, folks. Uh, but I'm gonna kind of show you. So these are the county-owned beaches. We were hanging out right here. And this is where we took our walk today. So we started right here and we walked all the way down. As we went down, we were going in and out of different private locations. Uh, this, of course, is uh, where it all started. Uh, I believe it's this one right here. <laughs> There's old Governor Mike Huckabee's house. Uh, the thing that started it all. So, uh, yeah, that was the beach that we're walking down today. You can see how many of these places you're actually allowed to be uh, by looking at this interactive map, which is a great tool. Uh, kind of what we were talking about today with the parking situation. You know, you come down here, uh, beautiful beach access here, but look, we only have 14 or 15 spots here. And if you're not there early, guess what? You're probably not gonna get a place. Now, lots of folks park over here. They also park over here, but that's pretty much it, folks. You're not supposed to park anywhere else. Uh, these neighbors back here are not very neighborly. They do not want you parking there. They have do not post, uh, do not park signs. Uh, they have, uh, they'll tow you. Uh, just so you know, don't park over here. And I understand, you know, I understand the plight of some of these folks too, because you know, you pay all this money for this beach house and you can't even access your home. That can be quite frustrating. It is what it is. I think ultimately it's on us. Uh, or on the county to provide better transportation. I wish they had a tram, kind of like Great and Beach has, to where they bought some land out here and they could bus folks in to this area. But when you're thinking about it, this is not that big of a stretch of beach anyways, but it just makes for a really tough time at the beach. All right, let's go to Great and Beach. That's uh, another location we were at today. We're gonna fly right down over here. Great and Beach, one of my favorite spots. And look at all this land for use down here. So you come down here, you got Grayton, and Grayton is one of the uh, bigger beach accesses for folks. Of course, we have uh, all the State Park Beach here on the Dune Lake, which is really great. I mean, you got just miles of coastline there uh, that you can access. They do have a way to get in over here and park over here on this side. They have the uh, Turtle Reef out here if you want to kayak out there. And uh, then we have all these accesses, you know, kind of close to the beach here. And what they do is they bus people in here because it's such a big area. Uh, they are able to bus folks in. And basically the way it works is we have Red Bar here. They'll drop you off, the trains will drop you off right here and then you have to walk down here through to the access. And then you have all that beach to work with, which is really nice. The tram will come up this road right here and drop you off right over here. So that's pretty nice. But if you look at all these areas red here, these are all the private beaches that are up and down 
the coast. This is a great resource, by the way. Certainly hope you check it out. If you're visiting the 38 area, visit southwalton.com slash beach bay access location. Today's public versus private beaches situation that you see throughout 38 Walton County, Florida, results from House Bill 631 passed by the Florida legislature in 2018. Effective July 1st, 2018, this law essentially voided Walton County's 2017 customary use ordinance and allowed private property owners to more easily claim the beach in front of their homes as their private property. So what is customary use? It's the idea that most beaches in Walton County and throughout the world have historically been open to the public and should remain so regardless of where the property lines are drawn. And in 1974 ruling, the Florida Supreme Court backed up customary use as a constant standard for pretty much all of Florida. In most of the counties in Florida, the beaches are all available for the public to enjoy, but that's not necessarily the case here on 30A. So let's talk about HB 631. This is a heated debate. In the five years since HB 631 was passed, countless appeals, rulings, and new bills have been introduced to address this. The issue has been tied up in the courts for years now, and I'm no legal expert, so if you want to learn more about this law and the background of its contentious debate, you can simply search HB 631 Walton County, Florida, and you'll find countless articles there. Even if this were to be overruled or modified, the beach access points on private property would still exist. For example, the seaside access would still be gated. The difference could be that once you get down to the beach, you could enjoy any part of it. This means that you would likely be able to go down the stairs, at a small public access and set up anywhere you want as far as the eye could see without encountering no trespassing signs in both directions. You know what, it would be great to go to customary use for all like most other places are. It's kind of embarrassing when people visit 30A and are told they have to sit on one specific portion of the white sand while the adjacent area sits completely empty except for, of course, the no trespassing sides. Recently, the Walton County Commissioners have reached some sort of top of settlement uh, with some of the beachfront owners, and it's a bit confusing to say the least, which all of this seems to be confusing. Basically what they're saying this new settlement is the public is allowed to use 10 to 20 feet of some private beaches between certain hours of the day. However, the property owner can make anyone leave if they choose, and visitors have to be five feet apart and can't use umbrellas. I don't know if they got this from COVID legislation, but I can honestly say I'm glad it's not six feet apart. So yeah, you can come down with your friends, but you gotta stay five feet apart from each other kind of weird. Another question to ask here, do private beach owners own the entire beach? Well, no. Generally, a private beach is only private up to the mean high water line or wet sand. This means you can walk along all 26 miles of white sand at 38 beaches as long as you are on or near the wet sand is. So basically, I'm walking along the wet sand right now. This area right here, good to go. If I go up this way, I'm trespassing. Wet sand, good. Dry sand, bad. Wet sand, good. Dry sand, bad. So even if I wanted to, I could basically set up my chair here on the wet sand of a private beach. If you do so, make sure that there is no one in the beach behind you that's already set up. If it's a private beach, they probably want to see what's in front of them, not at the back of your head or your bum while you're overlooking this beautiful beach. Basically, the, the simple thing here, guys, is to use common sense. So use common sense. Be nice. And truthfully, you know, I think all this political brouhaha could have been completely done without uh, if people were just more kind to each other, you know? Like if you realize it's a private beach and somebody's set up for a wedding, you don't want to go sit up in front of it. And if a owner of a place, if they're enjoying it and they come down and you say, hey man, uh, we're really enjoying the view today. Would you mind scooching down? Just scooch down. I mean, it's really common sense. I don't know why it's had to become a legal issue. All right, let's talk about the differences between public and private beaches on 30A. Both public Public and private beaches on 30A have advantages and disadvantages depending on your priorities and your preferences. There's no blanket answer as to which one is better. It all depends on the actual beach access and what type of public or private access it is. In fact, some parts of 30A, private beaches are smaller and busier than public beaches and vice versa. In areas like Rosemary Beach, the private beach is very large, running the length of the entire community. On the other hand, you may visit a public access in Seagrove that's only about 50 feet wide. Each part of 30A has something different 
that makes it special. And most owners who bought in that area bought there because they love it. So people are fiercely loyal to their town beaches. Let's talk a little bit about public 30A beaches. There are various Walton County public beach access points on 30A that offer free or low cost access to the Gulf of Mexico. These can be broken up into three types, state parks, neighborhood beach access points, and regional beach access points. And they are all quite different. The county generally allows you to choose from various beach vendors for services such as chair rentals and beach bonfires. All of the county run beach access points have one set of beach rules. For example, tents must be 10 feet wide or smaller to set up on the back half of the beach. Now how about public 30A state park beaches? Well, South Walton County is home to some of the best Florida state parks. The following have direct beachfront as part of their park. Grayton Beach State Park, Topsail Hill Preserve State Park, and Deer Lake State Park. These are such treasures. If you want a less crowded beach on 30A, this is where to be. These state parks each have dune lakes that 30A is known for. These are rare bodies of water formed around freshwater accumulates behind the dunes and mixes with salt water from the Gulf of Mexico. Visitors can kayak or paddleboard on the lakes at most nearby state parks, offering a peaceful and scenic experience. However, there are a few drawbacks. At peak season, the parking lots fill up quite early in the morning and they close the gates. So you must get there early to get a parking spot. Also, these tend to not be within walking distance from many accommodations unless you're camping or staying in the cabins there. This makes trips back and forth to your house or condo more difficult. Lastly, Florida State Parks prohibit alcoholic beverages in all public areas. So you'll have to leave your drinks at home. Ouch, no drinks on the beach. That's a tough one for many. Now let's talk about Public 38 neighborhood beach access points. There are 47 of these in South Walton County. So if you're staying in an area that is not a private town with its own access such as Seaside, Alice Beach, Watercolor, Water Sound, or Rosemary Beach, this is likely where you'll access the beach. The upside is that many are walkable to your accommodations, making the trek there is easy, especially in places like Seagrove Beach, but they do vary quite a bit in size. Most will have stairs down to the beach over the gorgeous dunes, this means they're generally not handicap accessible. And any wagons or wheel coolers will need to be carried down an often steep set of stairs. These places generally have little or no parking at all. And remember, LSVs or street legal golf carts must park in an actual parking spot. They do ticket and tow off in here. So make sure you're parked legally at a neighborhood beach access. All right, now let's talk about public 38 regional beach access points. You will find 10 regional beach access points on 38 or nearby. Most have parking, lifeguards, ADA accessible restrooms, and boardwalks. However, only one of the regional access points on 38 has more than 50 parking spots. So again, like anywhere along 38, the early bird gets the worm, and oftentimes it can be difficult to find a place to park. You're in a good spot if you're within a mile or two walking or biking distance of these regional access points. They typically offer a different amount of room for visitors to spread out. However, as I mentioned everywhere on 38, it's very busy during peak season. You may think to yourself, hey, I'm going to skip the public beaches and I'm going to look for some private ones. Well, let's slow down. There is much more to consider and private beaches aren't always better. All right, let's talk about private 30A beaches. Just as we saw with the public beaches, there are several different types of private beaches along 30A, but very few of them are what I would consider private. I like to refer to many of these as deeded beach access. Since they are deeded beach accesses, you can access them when staying at a particular area, but so can everyone else staying in that area. In peak season, that can mean a lot of people. Typically, these beach access points have their own rules, including no beach tents and all chair and umbrella riddles have to go through a particular vendor. In many cases, the community has a relationship with a beach chair vendor that allows them to enforce the rules and maintain the beach on their behalf. The three types of private beaches on 30A are beachfront homes, private neighborhoods or condo complexes, and private community beaches. If you're looking for a private beach, something only accessible to your group, you must look for a private beachfront home. But bring your wallet because these are typically quite expensive to rent. Like these guys behind me, these big mansions, you're looking at $28,000 a week during peak season. Now, there's only so many people that can afford $28,000 a week during peak season. The people that own these ones are usually the corporate investors, the people that decided that they were going to make a quick buck off the place and are the ones that are fighting hardest for HB 631. And truthfully, even though it's kind of an a-holeish thing to do, I can see why. Uh, if you get all of this beachfront attached to the property you buy, and then the taxpayers will pay in case there's a hurricane or anything else to dredge up all the sand that gets eroded from the beach, why would you not want to protect that asset? It's huge. And especially when you could say, hey, listen, you rent our place for $28,000 a week, you get this whole beach to yourself. It is your private beach. It adds an air of exclusivity. Is it right? 
Well, in my opinion, no. I think it's completely wrong. I think these beaches should be open. Uh, I think this is a fostering a lot of greed. And I think this is destroying what we love in 38. But that's just my personal opinion. Now, another kind of access you can look for is a private neighborhood or condo access. And that's what a lot of people do when they're down here. Most of the time when renting a non-beachfront home or condo on 38 advertises a private beach, it's one of these. And they all vary quite a bit. For example, the Adagio is a gated beachfront condo complex that's just west of where we're at here in Blue Mountain Beach. This means that the beach is all private to all stayed in that condo complex. They have a nice sized beach for the number of units, making it not uncomfortably crowded during peak season. But the units there sell for more and rent for more than their neighbors across the street that don't have a deeded entrance. Lastly, we have private community beaches. These are beaches that are reserved for a specific town on 30A. This includes Seaside, Watercolor, Alice Beach, Water Sound, Rosemary Beach, and more. In these areas, staying at the hotels on 30A or vacation rentals within the limits in that specific community grants you access to one or many of the access points within that community. This is usually a sweet spot on 38, giving you plenty of beach access and walkability to shops and restaurants, which is the top priority for many families. However, staying within these communities is often more expensive than staying in neighboring communities. This is why it's expensive to stay in Rosemary Beach. And while it's a great place to invest or even to visit here in 30A, you'll find that a lot of your rental properties, especially in Water Sound, are gonna be very far away from the beach. Now the $50 million question, how damaging is this for tourism and homeowners? Well, this is terrible news for the average investor or homeowner on 30A. The fact is, if you don't own a McMansion, you and your guests have very limited access to the beach. When all these properties were scooped up as Airbnbs, it created a real problem. That problem wasn't kicked out the locals out. The locals were the ones who took care of the area, making sure unruly vacationers were reported or at least given a, hey, you can't do that here. This is our home. Please don't pee on the side of cars. Also, since everyone owns an Airbnb here now, it's hard to make money as an Airbnb owner. The market has become oversaturated with too many folks that had the same idea. In fact, it's widely known here that if you can break even on an investment property at 30A, it's a heck of a deal. Not many opportunities exist anymore for cash positive ones for real estate investors. In the meantime, 30A keeps spending millions to have people come visit our beaches, and when they get here, they realize they can't actually visit the beach. What in the world? It's actually just so frustrating uh, to have the most beautiful beaches in America and have simple greed take over and control the narrative because this place is awesome. It's been awesome for many years. But when you get these out of town investors coming in, they don't even live here. They are basically looking at these pieces of property here, not as a livable asset, but just as simply an asset where it can sit empty. But as long as they own the beach space in front, they make more money, it tears the community down. You know, I'm hoping that we can recover from this because the more and more tourists that come down here and realize how private the beaches are, the more realizing they're not gonna come back. In fact, a lot of people that I see on Facebook groups currently are expressing extreme displeasure with what's going on right now and the fact that the beaches that they do have are extremely crowded and there's no place to park. I don't care how beautiful your beaches are. If people can't get to the beach, it's not worth going to the beach. Eventually, this is gonna affect property owners, investors, and vacationers here in South Walton County. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this video is probably going to piss some people off. Uh, namely, the people with all the big mansions over here, they feel they're entitled to all the beach that's in front of them. Most realtors in my position would not be taking the position I am because they eventually want to represent some of these 13 million, $12 million properties. I, however, was taught by my family to do the right thing. And when I see something bad happening, I wanna talk about it. And something definitely bad is happening here. It's destroying the fabric of 30A. And I feel it my responsibility to stand up and use my YouTube channel as a platform to let everybody know exactly what's going on here. This isn't cool. It's making it very hard for the tourists to come here and have a good time, which the tourists is the lifeblood of our community. If we don't have the tourists, this place doesn't exist. I have friends that own businesses here right now that are struggling so bad because the tourism has dropped off. We're now in the second week of spring break and it is not anywhere close to the spring breaks past. I got buddies that are about to close up businesses here and it's all because of what's going on. I take it personal. It's really not fair, especially to the other residents of Walton County uh, that don't live on the beach now, that don't have public access, that have no place to park. You know, there's the old saying, sharing is caring. 
there ain't a lot of sharing going on here. There's a lot of people trying to make money and trying to exploit the natural beauty of these beautiful towns. And I don't agree with it. All right, so here we are. Second week of spring break, absolutely nobody behind me for the whole of this beach. We're talking, geez, probably three or four miles of beach behind me. And here we are coming up to the one public access at Blue Mountain Access. You'll notice the private properties here with the lawn chair set out or the chair set out. Of course, you can rent these chairs from the owners of these properties for an X amount. Or if you want, you can stay on the access part of the beach. And the access be part of the beach, uh, approximately 60 to 70 feet wide at this place, I would assume. I don't know, man. So yeah, this is the access right here. First come, first serve. And good luck getting parking if you're not here early. Let's take a look at our race on some of the beach chairs. Gotta walk along the wet sand. Make sure you do that or you could be trespassing here. And the chairs are $45 per day per setup, which is pretty usual. Uh, you know, these are fees that you'll see everywhere else up and down the coast. I believe it's $40 per day in Panama City Beach. And if you want to use the South Walton Beach service uh, right here at the access point, you can as well. It looks like $65 for a set for one day rental. And uh, you could do additional chairs and umbrellas at 25 bucks each. Also be advised if you're bringing tents, which uh, a lot of people do like to do to the beach. You can only do it on the back half of the beach. Right up until this point is your tent line on the beach. Everything else in the front there, it has to be an umbrella or a chair. Going back to the back. Hey, if you like what we're doing on this channel, please give us a like and subscribe. If you have any comments, even if they're negative ones, if you don't agree with the way I feel, please drop them below because I think a nice discussion about this probably will do it a lot of good. And if you're looking to move to our area of the world, I'd love to talk to you. My number is 901-230-0865. My wife, Sarah, and I uh, are real estate agents here and we help people all the time. We literally get calls from hundreds of people uh, you know, wanting to move to our area and looking to explore it. We love helping you. 901-230-0865 or you can reach me at john at rubyredmedia.com. Let's get back to it. All right, now this is a thing that Walton County should certainly invest in. This is like one of the best public places to park. This is a huge parking lot area for a ton of vehicles and they offer a free tram to the beach. So, you know, while it's hard to find a place to park on some parts of 30A, you can just come over here and park in this and take the tram for free. All right, so here we go. We're about to uh, get on the bus here. And as you can see, it's very cool. Look at this thing. Son, that is the way to travel in Walton County now. Come on now, you got a dang beach tram and it's free with all this public parking. All right, we're leaving the bus now. We're making our way to Grayton Beach, public access, which you can tell this area is so flipping cool, guys. So they got a covered area here for you to wait on the tram when it comes back through, which is super cool. You got some of the cooler shops in town. One of my favorite spots in the whole world. And before people started coming down here in flocks, Red Bar was one of the original spots to be and it's still to this day is one of my favorite restaurants in the area. I absolutely love this place. It's charm, it's beauty, it's is indicative of what 30A is and what 30A is always meant to me. Just a wonderful spot. You can have a really good time in this place. They got live music uh, pumping every night. Uh, they got a chalkboard. It only has like six or seven items on there that you can order because they don't mess around with a bunch of food. They just mess around with the stuff they're good at. National treasure right here at Red Bar. As far as parking goes down here at Grayton Beach, don't even try it. I I'm serious. Just don't even try it. Use the tram. Uh, Uber in if you have to. But uh, don't try and park. It's impossible. I love Grayton because it's got such a great vibe to it. It reminds me a lot of my hometown of Austin, Texas. You'll see a lot of the funky murals and cool colors. And it's got a vibe, man. The spot's got a vibe. And here's your public access point. So we were literally probably a five minute walk away from the tram. And here we are at the beach. And this is a a nice public access point. So right over here, you have the uh, the public beach right over here, which is awesome. But you look across the Dune Lake here and all this over to the left is a state park, which if you want to cross over that way, you literally have nobody over that way. And you can set up wherever you like.
Right here in front of us, you'll see one of the many dune lakes that make up uh, this area. It is so special. There's only several places in the world where these dune lakes exist. Uh, there is a reef right off of shore here in the state park. What makes Great and Beach State Park so cool uh, is that you have this huge beach area over here, but also if you cross the little water inlet over there, now right now it's dry, so you could actually pass over without getting in, but sometimes you have to wade through that water, and even sometimes it's high enough to where you have to swim through it, but you can actually swim from this side of the park over to that side, or when it's dry like this, you could just take your wagon and head right over there. It's really nice, they have this little boardwalk area here for you, and they do offer the beach chair service down here. As you can see, Great Beach N38, an incredible place to visit, and what makes it so incredible is there's public transportation, there's parking, and there's a lot of public beach here. Absolutely can't beat it. So beautiful out here. Another thing that makes Great and Beach so unique, it's one of the few places where you can actually grab your vehicle and ride up on the beach. You can also park your boat here. Use this as a boat ramp. Actually, I've never seen this before. I'm really quite curious to see how they do this because this water is shallow right here. You look over here, there's this pickup vehicle. Let's see how this goes down. So as it turns out, this is kind of a lottery based system for these cars that can come down here. There's only so many, you have to be a resident of Walton County and it's a lottery. So it's not like everybody can just come down here. They keep it very exclusive. Uh, there's only 16 boat captains that could come down here and do this. So uh, it's a very exclusive deal. Apparently all of this land was deeded to the fishermen by the folks that used to own this property on a hundred year lease. And they're about halfway through it right now. But uh, a really cool spot. One of the only places in Florida you can actually pull up your boat and dock it from the coast. It's one of the very few places in Florida. Actually, it's the only place I was told. It's the only place in Florida you can actually uh, get a boat on from the beach. And it just happens to be the most pristine beach in North America. Very cool. As you can see, there's so much to be passionate about this area. This 30A area is just so rich in history and beauty uh, that I don't want to see it run, you know? And there's a few bad apples in here that I think it makes it a little bit harder uh, for this area to succeed. And, you know, if speaking out about this today was the wrong thing, then I apologize, but uh, I do think it needs to be fixed. And, you know, I'm glad that we got to see some of the uniqueness uh, of the area that makes it so special. It's just a beautiful place. It's a one of a kind place and it needs to be protected, but not protected for personal citizens. It needs to be protected for the public. Hey, if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And if you're looking to make a move here to the Emerald Coast, my wife and I are both realtors here. Uh, we'd love if you reach out to us, 901-230-0865. That's my personal phone number. Or you can reach me at my email, john at rubyredmedia.com. Hey, we release content like this every week. If you'd like to see another video about the awesome things that this area has to offer, check this video out right here. All right, we'll see you next time.